this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a vector file and create the toolpath for Stepcraft's new wood burning pen attachment. Now, you'll notice I'm using uh, Cut2D Pro here, but whether you're using Cut2D Desktop, VCarve Desktop, or VCarve Pro, everything I'm going to show you here applies to all four versions of the program. There's nothing I'm going to show you that is, is applicable just to a Pro version. So, uh, just I'm just happen to be using Cut2D Pro for this particular uh, video recording. So, the first thing we're going to do here is create a new file. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file that's six inches by six inches, so six inch square. And you'll notice that when I enter in the width and height, the work area automatically changes to, to match those dimensions. Uh, so the other thing we're going to do is on the material Z. Now, this setting is not that important for, for this particular application because the wood burning pen is simply going to engrave into the top of the wood. We're not actually cutting all the way through. Now a good rule of thumb just as a matter of practice is to set this to the thickness of your wood. Uh, it really doesn't matter, like I said, in this particular job. We are going to do a depth per pass of one eighth of an inch. Uh, when we run this. So you want to make sure that you have this thickness set to at least uh, 0.125 or greater. Uh, in this particular case, I just, again, out of habit, I measured the thickness of my wood, which is exactly 0.25 inches, and that's what I'm putting in here. Now you have a couple options as far as the starting position of the job. This is where you're going to zero off the uh, X, Y, and Z for the tool. Uh, before you start the job. Now in this case I'm going to use the lower left but say you were uh, going to wood burn a design into the top of say a jewelry box uh, you may want to use the center position here and the reason I say that is because you could actually measure the width and height of the jewelry box mark a location on the lid where you want the design to go and then simply move the point from the wood burning pen over that mark and zero X, Y, and Z there, and that it, that job will now uh, burn into the wood around that center point. So that's a good way if you're trying to center uh, a wood burning project onto an existing finished piece of material, uh, using the center point is a good way to do it. In this case, we're just going to use a scrap piece of wood, so I'm going to use the lower left corner, and we're going to set units to inches. Now. We're going to import a pirate design that was actually done by uh, Jordan, who is on the support team here at Stepcraft. Uh, he's a really talented uh, graphic artist on, on top of everything else that he does here for Stepcraft. Uh, and he actually did this drawing so that we can use it for this particular video. So what we're going to do is it's a vector. So we're going to import vectors. And here it is. It's, it's a pirate. And this is the vector drawing. So this was actually uh, something he hand drew and then scanned and then uh, used uh, Toolpass to create a, uh, a vector of, of this particular drawing. So you'll see that I have my work area at six by six inches. And one of the things I'm gonna wanna do now is scale this drawing up. So I wanna, I wanna utilize the, the whole workspace here. And I can do that while everything is selected purple. All I need to do is go over here to the Move Scale Rotate Selection tool and grab hold of this hollow square in the corner. The outer square will rotate the object. The inner hollow square will actually rescale it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this out a little bit more so it looks like it's gonna fill the work area. And then what I wanna do is I wanna center it on in, in my project area here. So I'm going to click this button, which is align selected objects. And I'm going to click this center button, which is to center it to the material. And you'll see I, I've actually made it a hair too big and it's going to kind of go off the work material. So what we're going to do is go back to the move select tool and we're going to scale this down a little bit. Now, because I centered this object, on the work material, when I grab this corner and I drag it down, if I hold the shift key, it's gonna move, resize it uh, around the center point. So I won't have to recenter the object, okay? So all I'm doing is just holding the shift, mouse uh, clicking down over the uh, hollow box in the corner and dragging it until I'm happy with the finished size. Now, for the most part, that's it. There really isn't anything else that you have to worry about on this side of the uh, the panel here, uh, 
unless you had maybe want to put some text or something like that into it. Now, what we are going to do next is set up the tool path for this particular job. And it's, it's actually rather simple, but there's a couple things that we need to do um, to make this work properly. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to hover over the tool path tab and we're going to click this little pin here. And that's just going to pin the tool path tab so it stays visible the whole time. And my, now I have both panels here and then I have my work uh, area in the middle. Now, in order to do this, what we're going to do is we, we basically want the wood burning pen to trace this line. Okay, so in order to do that, you're going to use uh, a profile toolpath. So we're going to click that. And we have uh, the tools here. We're going to talk about that first. We're going to go a little bit out of order. Uh, we're going to go into select. Now, what I did here was I went under the specialist. So you'll notice there's all these different bold headings, uh, end mills, ball nose, V-bits, etc. And I went under the specialist tab. And what I did, and I already have it here, um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this and I'm going to create a new one just to show you how to do it. Uh, I'm going to go to new and then under tool type, I'm just going to click end mill. Uh, now, it really doesn't matter because we're not cutting the wood, but I'll, I'll explain why I want to do this. So I'm going to rename this to wood burning pen. And I'm going to set my diameter. Now, the diameter of if this was an end mill is, is just like this image shows. It's the full diameter of the end mill. Um, in this particular case, I'm only concerned about the point. Okay, so you can measure it, and it's it's actually in this, it's it's about a 32nd of an inch or so. So what I'm doing here is I am going to make the diameter 0 0.03 inches, and I'm going to set my pass depth to 0.125, which is an eighth of an inch. Now this this is important because what the uh, the the pen is actually spring loaded, and what we're going to do is before we start the job, we're going to touch the tip of the pen on the top of the work surface, and we're going to zero off the uh, z axis. All right, so that the z zero is the top of the work surface. And what we want to have happen is when we start to actually engrave or wood burn, we want to move the z-axis down an eighth of an inch. And what that's going to do is put some spring-loaded tension on the tip of the wood burning pen as it presses down into the wood. It'll give a constant pressure, which is what we want. Uh, so we're, we're going to use an eighth of an inch as a pass depth for that. Uh, step over and spindle rate really doesn't matter here. Uh, on the feed rate for this, we're actually going to set this to 10 millimeters per second. The plunge rate, uh, we leave at 10 millimeters a second. It's just the speed of which the uh, bit is going to go, or the tip is going to go down into the wood. 10 millimeters a second is more than fine. And because it's not a, a spinning tool, we don't have to worry about the RPM. So that's it. We're going to go ahead and click OK. And now you can see here that our tool is the wood burning pen. Now, the start depth is zero inches, which is the top of the work surface. And what we're going to do is we are going to go down, uh, as I said before, uh, an eighth of an inch. So our cut depth is going to be uh, 0.125 inches. All right. And you'll see here that the pass, it's going to do one pass. That's because our pass depth is 0.125. So that, that's going to stay at one. Now, if we were doing an end mill, most likely we'd want to cut either outside the line or inside the line. But because we want to trace the vector here, we're going to remain on the line. Uh, as far as the direction, climb, or conventional, it, it's irrelevant. You can choose whichever you want. In this case, conventional was defaulted. Uh, we don't need to worry about a last pass, and we don't need to worry about tabs, leads, ramps, orders, or corners. Uh, so that's really it. It's just one simple tool path that we're creating to uh, set this up so that we can wood burn this particular image. Uh, so we're going to click calculate. And okay, we got an error, no suitable vector selected. So we're going to do is highlight everything again so it turns purple and we're going to click calculate. Now you can see that here's a wood that I have set up. This is the preview screen. And uh, you can see the outlines. These, this blue outline is the path that the tool is, is going to take. These red lines are the um, movements in the air 
that the the tool is going to make. So there, it's not actually going to be making contact with the wood when you see these red lines. It's just moving from one vector to the next, and and it's it's doing the design. So that shows the uh, the path in the air of the tool. Uh, so you right now, all we want to do is we want to do a preview all tool pass. And that's going to kind of give us an idea what this is going to look like. Now, mind you, it thinks that we're using an end mill. So if you were to look at this really close, you'd see that it, it's showing it routed down uh, an eighth of an inch. Now, remember, this has got a point and it's spring loaded. So it's not actually going to push into the material that much. But this at least gives you an idea what the finished design is going to look like. Now, you could uh, change the toolpath color here to black and it actually fills in the uh, the area that it's going to be burned so it gives you a little bit more of a realistic look of what this is going to look like once it's it's burned um, into the material so now that that's done and if you're happy with the design everything looks good uh, all we have to do is save the toolpath now so we're gonna select the profile 4 here and this could be any name you gave it uh, when you calculate the toolpath there's a, a spot here for you to name it you can call it whatever you want and then you would click calculate and that would assign that name to it so in this case we left it defaulted to profile 4 we're gonna highlight that we're gonna go ahead to the save toolpath we're gonna click that and you'll see that it, uh, the, the tool to be saved is for the wood burning pen uh, right now as of this video we are using the mock 2 slash 3 ARCS millimeters dot txt file post processor now hopefully in the future uh, Vetric will release a post processor that will be specific to stepcraft but for now uh, if you you look in your list here and you don't see a stepcraft then always default to mock 2 slash 3 to this one here uh, and that's it so we're gonna save the toolpath and we're just gonna call it uh, pirate and we're gonna click save and now we can move over to UCC and see, and we can set this job up uh, to, to run on the machine. So we move over to UCC and see, and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load the file. And it's the uh, pirate, it's the text document, this is the G code file. And what you're going to see in the preview window here is an exact duplicate of what you saw in the Vetric uh, preview window, including the blue lines and the red lines, which are the tool movements. Uh, below that, you'll see all of the G code that's going to uh, be required to actually make this design on the Stepcraft CNC. And what we're going to do now is we're going to move the uh, tip of the tool over to the lower left corner, and then we're going to lower it the Z axis using the page down key on the keyboard until the tip of the wood burning pen just touches the top of the surface of, of the wood that we're working on. Then when we do that, we're going to come back here and we're going to click zero all and everything on the digital readout should read zero telling the Stepcraft machine and UCCNC that that is the new default zero position and the job will run from that position outward. So once we've got all that set up, we're going to turn on the uh, wood burning pen and we're going to let it heat up. I would give it three, four minutes uh, to, to get hot enough to where it's actually going to burn into the wood. And once we're all set, we're just going to click cycle start. And now we can watch this burn in, in the design on our scrap piece of wood. 